Hi guys, today I'll show you how to prepare um, an, a file so that you can cut an applique using a silhouette, uh, portrait, or um, cameo. Um, I use Sewup so Pro. I think that there are other embroidery softwares that have the same capability, but I will, I will show you how to do this using Sewup so Pro. So um, on the screen, you see a very simple applique file. Um, it has an outline stitch in pink, uh, tacked, on, tacked on stitch in green, and then the final set, satin stitch in, in red. Um, so what Pro can do this a couple of different ways, and I, I will show you um, a couple of different ways to do it. So um, I also have the Silhouette Studio. I, I have the Designer Edition, um, but if you don't have the Designer Edition, that's okay too. There's a, there's a way to do this without the Designer Edition. You can use a JPEG file. So the first thing you have to do is figure out um, what is the best uh, stitch for you to copy or, or cut. Uh, normally is either the outline stitch or the tack down stitch. Uh, in this case, I'll pick the tack down, but they're, you know, pretty equal. So tack down um, is isolated, so it's the only thing that is on my um, highlighted. If I had multiple appliques, you can actually do them all at one time. Just uh, hit control and pick all of your um, appliques if I had flowers or other things going on. So I'll click this little blade up here. It looks like a silhouette blade. You can see it's blue. Um, in this case, I will show you this file. I'll show SVG later. I'll show you this using the JPEG file. Um, don't use the inflation factor in Sewup Pro. The inflation factor grows the file proportionately um, which doesn't always leave you with an equal outline. I do want my cutout on the silhouette to be slightly larger than um, the placement stitch so that the placement stitch obviously can catch it. Normally I'll increase it by about one millimeter and that's that's good enough. So, um, okay, so I'll save the cutout. Um, it saves it to the same location where your um, applique file is. In this case, I had saved it to a desktop, so it is going to save a JPEG um, to my desktop. So I'll go ahead and click OK. Click over to the silhouette, and instead of merging the file, I'll open it. And the reason for it is, it seems that when you merge a JPEG file, it doesn't come into the right size. Um, but if you open it, here, here we go. It, it's it's perfect. So I'm doing open. I found my JPEG file. I'll, I'll bring into here. Now, um, if you're familiar with uh, the silhouette, a JPEG file is not something you can cut. Let me zoom in a little. It's not something you can cut. So you actually have to create cut lines for the JPEG. The way to do it is um, open the trace window and we're going to trace this image. Um, select trace area. Um, I'm going to make a window around this just like that. And I don't know if you can see it on your screen, but it creates this kind of the yellow line. Um, in this case, this is so simple. I'm going to click Trace Outer Edge, and there you go. If you click Regular Trace, um, the silhouette thinks that the thickness of that line is what you're trying to cut. So it would actually give you two cut lines, one right outside of the black outline and one right inside of it. So they are very close together. If that ever happens to you, if you're tracing a JPEG, um, just delete one of those um, and, and you're good to go. It doesn't really matter. They are so close that it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to fill this just so that you can see it better. So um, there you go. So that's my image. I can put this to the side. Now, this image uh, that you see in red is exactly the size of my uh, placement stitch. And as I said, I want to make it just slightly bigger. So I'll click on it. I will open the offset window, which is this little icon here at the top. Click on offset. Um, I'll offset it, and that's too much. Um, that, that would be too much. You would have fabric sticking out everywhere. Um, so I'll go ahead and highlight that, and 0.04 inches is about one millimeter, which is normally good enough. If I'm doing towels, I do 0.06, uh, because the towels tend to be fluffier and the applique needs a little more room, but in any case, I'll apply that. And now, well, let me see if I can zoom in closer for you to see, there's a there's a line right around my red shape. I'll move my, move my red out to the side, 
I'll just put that somewhere. Um, and I'll make this guy whatever. It doesn't matter. You don't have to fill it. I'm just making it easier. I'm going to make it blue. Okay. Um, so made it blue. Click on your cutting uh, dialog box or screen here. Cut settings. Um, so you see that it does have a cut line right around it. Um, and what you will do here is you're going to scroll down before you send it to your silhouette. And there is a setting for fabric. Let me see if I can find it here for you. Fabric. So this is not a thick fabric like canvas. is a thin fabric like cotton prints. Um, and I leave everything exactly as a default. My blade is on three. I do have a blade that is dedicated for fabrics. Um, it's the little blue blade from the silhouette. It's technically this, the fabric blade, but I don't think it really matters. As long as you have a blade that you know that you're only going to use a fabric with, and not paper, you should be okay. Um, put your blade on three and send this guy to the silhouette. Um, there's one more detail. So normally before I cut uh, my applique, I take my applique fabric and I iron um, heat and bond light behind it. Make sure that it's the light and not the regular one, the one in the purple pack. Um, peel the paper off of the heat and bond before I put my fabric on the silhouette mat. Put it with the heat and bond side down so the right side of the fabric is facing you. Um, and that'll make your cut very clean um, around that. And if you use the defaults, it's going to work out perfectly.